Good evening, Mile End. Tonight's guest is Mark Slutsky, local filmmaker, personality. Uh, just with us after his film, Sorry Rabbi, and a new film coming out, a new short film called The Decelerators, which we're gonna talk about tonight. Mark, thanks for being on the show. It's my pleasure. A real pleasure, thank you so much. So, uh, you live in the neighborhood, huh? I do live in the neighborhood. Yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing. We won't ask you where you live so you don't get groupies okay. or anything. Well, I've lived here for a while though. That's, yeah, that's a long all. time. Yeah. You're, you're one of us. I guess so. You're, you're Depends who of... us is. Well, you make films, you have a beard. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. You're fair Jewish. Enough. You're one of us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll buy that. <laughs> um, you have a new film. I want to talk about it right away, actually, because I saw the trailer, and it looks really cool. It's called The Decelerators. Yes. Short film, how long is it? It's about five minutes long. It's only five minutes. I mean, the yeah. trailer looks epic. Yeah, I wanted it to feel sort of... Uh... You know, some beautiful epic. CG in there, too. There's like that box that's opening yes, it up. Yes, I have one special effect in it. Can you tell us what it's about? Uh, okay, yeah, it was, um, it's a film about a group of people who decide to slow down time. Uh, and they do that by inventing this machine, which you sort of see for a second in the trailer. And uh, it's each, the last shot. Yes, the last shot of the trailer. I wanted that, that to be the, sort of the money shot. Yeah. Uh, I got my friend Michael Winder. He's a local artist and graphics guy to do the special effects. It looked great. It took him like a month to do this one five second special effect. Yeah. So it's about them using this machine and how it affects their lives and how it sort of backfires on them. What do they use it for? They basically use it to, because they feel that life is going by too fast and that their mortality is oh, impinging on the them. the truth though, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so they, they, they have this machine that they can use to slow down any given moment of their lives sort of eternally. So they can't stop time, but they can slow it down. They, it is sort of between slowing down and stopping. Okay. It's decelerating. Amazing. See? I mean, well, I love the idea and it made me think of um, Nicholson Baker's book, The Fermata. Mm -hmm which uh, was pornographic. I mean, when it was sold, it was sold in like a plastic cover because he would stop time. He would stop time with a machine that he built. Yeah, no, I think he did it mentally or something. In the end, yes. Yeah. Like in his 40s now, at the end, like when we find him in the book, he's in his 40s and, and he's so good he can snap his fingers. Right, right, right. But uh, I like that and no one's ever really dealt with that. And time travel is something that is often... I don't know, it's, well, it's misunderstood is what it is. <laughs> yes, time travel is misunderstood. <laughs> I would agree with that. But it's not time travel that we're talking no, about. Here. No, no, exactly. time alteration. No, but some people would say time, time stopping, time slowing is a form of traveling. Well, I would say to those people yeah. that uh, we're always traveling through time mm -hmm. forward. So I guess by stopping time or slowing it down, you're just altering the way you're already traveling through time. Absolutely. And this is your the film. Uh, the film before this was Sorry Rabbi, yeah. with um, oh, what's that beautiful girl you had in that? Jessica movie? Perez. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, my she's gosh. great. Did you have her on before uh, Mad Men or? Yeah, she was a friend of mine from before Mad Men. From uh, we met on the set of another movie that I. Uh, Which movie? Wrote, it was called Peepers. Oh yeah. It's a Mile End movie. Yeah. I co-wrote it, co-produced it. Great uh, job. Jess is one of the stars. Thank you. And uh, through a whole series of events. Uh, I ended up writing this movie, sort of, she sort of encouraged me to write it, and then she ended up being in it. Amazing. Yeah. Super funny. Also features Jacob Tierney, another yeah. local luminary. And how's that, and, and how did that do? Well, I mean, we, we showed it Toronto Film Festival, we showed it a uh, whole bunch of festivals, still playing at festivals. How can we watch movies now that all the video stores have closed? I mean, just in this neighborhood, Bois de Noir closed. Yeah. Uh, Blockbuster's dead. Blockbuster's, well, that's good. I mean, I know, but if it's the only video store in town. <sighs> I know. I mean, yeah. Passport closed? Oh, yeah. That place in Bernard? So, right now, the only place we got is Videotron. And, I mean, they're only open to sell us, like, cell phones. Yeah, I mean, Videotron, actually, the one on Park has a pretty good selection. I haven't been in a video store in years, though. So, how do you personally. watch movies? Uh, well, I used to, because I used to work for The Mirror, and I was the film editor there. That's right. I would just get sent movies all the time, and I would be sent two movies. And the last thing I wanted to do was rent more movies. And then so all my cards expired. But now I don't know. Like I, I, you have Netflix is actually like okay. Like if you can if you can hack the thing so you get American Netflix. Are we allowed to talk about that? It's, yeah. Well, yeah. You, you, there's this like there's a yeah, thing. Yeah, you, you change can, the IP address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like way better. That's what you learn, kids. You change the IP address. That's what you learn on this show. You change no, the IP address, and it looks like you're American. Uh, speaking of illegal things, we're going to do some illegal commercials, and we're going to be right back and stick around for a few more minutes. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. We'll be right back, and uh, well, well, we'll be right back with Mark Slutsky. See you soon.
Welcome back, Mile End. Uh, Mark, we were uh, before the break, we were talking a bit about The Mirror. You used to do the mo movie reviews. So how do you feel? The Mirror is gone. I miss it. I think it sucks. It sucks. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't worked for The Mirror for about a year when they closed. But, you know, I still think it, it, it was pretty important in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, not just employing writers, but and not just, you know, telling people what was going on, but... You know, I used to work in the listing section of the mirror, and mm -hmm. so I would like every art gallery, every like little show, every yeah. rock show, everyone would get in touch with me to you know do the calendar, and the way I, you know, people relied on it so much, and it was so important for all these hundreds of like tiny little artists. Frankly, I haven't been to a concert since it stopped because I don't even know what's happening anymore. There you go. Like really? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really it was important for getting the word out, and nothing has really replaced it. Although well, actually, one thing has replaced it. Cult. Yes, nothing was nothing had already replaced it at the time. It's no. not like the. That you know, it's not like Craigslist where you know the classified section was already online. There wasn't yeah. really a listings, but now there is, and it's a thing called Cult Montreal, which I'm not really involved with, but I know everyone and I support it, and I think it's great. Well, it looks great. I love their site. Yeah, and they're doing some print stuff as well. Yeah, they're doing the yeah. print. It, it's once a month though, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I think. The print edition is once a month, but they're updating stuff on their site like daily. Yeah. So I really like hope they do. But well. it looks good. Maybe it'll be for the best. May maybe it'll give them uh, the vantage point they really need to run smoother. I mean, they were losing money, I guess. Somehow. I don't even know what was going on. I mean, it was, no. they were owned by Quebecor. Everything was screwed up. Oh, but, that's right. But you know, uh, you know, it's probably it's a good opportunity for them to try new things. And do you think uh, it's a conspiracy to kill uh, English journalism? No, I don't think that's the way it works. I was trying to break a story. <laughs> Another failure <laughs> at Park Avenue tonight. No, it's just about money, you know. It's like that's all, you know. That's all people care. But they're about. moving to to the web, and that was something the Mirror never did. They never had a good web. It, presence. it took a while. I mean, I think no, by the never. end, I think by the end, they, you know, the, the site was redesigned. And I think it was much, much better. But I, you know, there were we for years. I mean, it was like agonizing. Oh my god, how bad the website was. But um, you have a web project. Yes, as I do. Well. A sad YouTube. Yes. Tell us about it. So sad YouTube is a blog I started uh, after I would. I'd like, you know, everyone talks about how YouTube comments are the worst thing in the world, right? They're like the most racist, sexist, stupidest, but... Badly written. Badly written. But, you know, I would, I would be, you know, I'd go to like, to listen to a song on YouTube. And I'd read, and sometimes the comments would be amazing. Like, there'd be like these crazy stories from people's lives. Totally, like, beautiful or sad or these moments of time. And, uh, and I thought, you know, there's actually something more here. Something worth... Preserving, and so I just started copying them to a Tumblr blog. Well, when, when I checked out uh, the website myself, the, your most recent posting was for a um, Aphex Twin song, which is really un Aphex. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I April know, 14. Yeah, yeah. Which you no, know, it's a really beautiful song. I beautiful. think it is. It is one side of Aphex Twin. Yeah, I guess so. And yeah, and it's the story of this girl who like sat down with this guy yeah. in his bedroom, listened to the song, and she had a huge crush on him and couldn't tell him, and then he hooked up with someone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the most sad story. story. But it's a story that you would never read anywhere else. She would probably never write anywhere else. She wouldn't put it on her Facebook. Uh, well, after the collapse, maybe it'll be the only thing uh, that'll survive. Like what, what YouTube comments after our civilization yeah, collapses. After our civilization collapses and, and we burn all the books for heat. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't and, know how we're gonna keep the servers. Well, on, the but. servers will go down, but but eventually, when when like whatever some kind of Hubbard like creature, uh, you know, takes over the planet, and they'll find the YouTube comments and they'll think we're thoughtful people. Maybe sure. If my blog is still standing, then I'll be happy. <laughs> But it's great. Is that your only? How, how do you feel about the web? I mean, our our shows on the web. How do I feel web. about the web? Yeah, I mean, our shows like, on how do I web. feel about paper? <laughs> how do you feel about air? <laughs> how do you feel about blondes? Uh, how do you feel about dogs? They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, just the idea that, you know, a lot of people ask us, why are we doing this show? And, and, and the idea is that, you know, we want to talk about the neighborhood with local people like you. And listen, have you ever been on Letterman? No. No, but you, you should be. Thank you. You know, you sh should be. So this is not that I'm a Letterman. I'm more like a, like a dead Merv Griffin. I'm like a collapsed... Undead Merv, Merv Griffin. Undead, <laughs> undead collapsed <laughs> yeah. Merv Griffin. But, um, so that's the idea. So, I mean, do you think, I mean, your films, they're short films, they're totally viable for the web. Do you think you get get a lot more viewership with the with the web? I mean, do you ever see yourself just only producing for the web? Do you think that's coming? I don't know. I mean, as a filmmaker, you want to think that your movies can play in movie theaters, yeah. on big screens, the way you know, with audiences to. full of people. That's yeah. the ideal. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's still great to do stuff and have like thousands of people be able to see it online or millions potentially. Potentially millions. millions. Yeah. Once the but, Chinese but, you know, hear about you, us, I don't know. Like when you have like when you have like a, a film in like a box on YouTube and you've got like your chat thing open and you've got your yeah. email and you're sort of watching it with one eye and like yeah. you know it's like 
It's not the same thing. No. It's not to say it's worse. It's just... It's different. Well, it's different. Yeah. It's different. Uh, well, I mean, the technology's coming to get together. Um, are you seeing anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking you out. It's just something I like to know. I'm going to get you a date right now. I'm going to get you uh, a yeah, date. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, you but, are? But thank you. Yeah, yeah, oh, you yeah. are? How, how long have you been going out? A couple months. Oh, yeah? yeah. How's it going? Good. Yeah. Totally good. Yeah, By yeah. the time this airs, like, God knows what will happen. <laughs> But uh, listen, man. Call me by surprise if that was a good one. Which, oh, gosh. Well, I was going to ask you other humiliating things, but I chose a game. I didn't, I actually had nothing else to ask you. But, um. Really, nothing else? Well, I mean, we could talk forever, but I mean, it's it's, it's a really low budget show and we're running out of electricity. So listen, I, 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 like think, how, you I think that's how it works. I'd like to offer you a banana. Oh, thank you. Have it when you get there. Can I show you a trick with a banana? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so most people think you open a banana by using this handle here. Yes. Problem As God is, intended. If, you, if you do that, Actually, I'll show it with two bananas. I'll show all Please over do. If you do that. Please do. Bananas so cost nothing. Open. That's why we have them. And it's, I don't, I think it's kind of uneven. Like, I, I always hated yeah. the way it's sort of like. It's true. It's, it's, it, 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 it's but like But the a... way monkeys open bananas, they go from the other end. Yeah. And they go like this. Much smarter. And look how much better balance that is. Look how much nicer it is. That is That's beautiful. how you open a banana. And on that note, Mark, thanks so much Mark for being on the show. <laughs> Park Avenue tonight, everybody. Mark Slutsky. Check out his film, The Decelerators. Check out the trailer at the very least. I think you'll be, really be impressed. SadYouTube.com. And SadYouTube.com for the saddest of the sad. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Good night.